Pirates will get you starting lineups for Mount St. Mary's. They're in the navy and gold. They couldn't have different colors even, Faith. They're the same <laughs> colors and the same mascot. Dakota Lafue, DeAndre Thomas, Jalen Benjamin, who scored in double figures in 20 games last season, will lead the way. George Tinsley makes his Mount St. Mary's debut, and Malik Jefferson is starting career game number 111, all with the same team. Starting lineup for West Virginia looks like that. There is the grad transfer, Eric Stevenson, all the way from South Carolina. He'll get his first start as a West Virginia Mountaineer, and along with him, Emmett Matthews. Matthews returns to Morgantown after one season spent at Washington to go along with Keedy Johnson, who returns for year number five. Jimmy Bell, a community college transfer. And how about this for West Virginia? Trey Mitchell will also be in action tonight as Kobe Johnson is the fifth Mountaineer out here. Well, yeah, everybody's been waiting to see Trey. You know, he hasn't a chance to uh, play that this year, so this should be interesting to see how he comes out. West Virginia wins the tip. This is Keedy Johnson getting things started for the Mountaineers. Eric Stevenson goes into the corner for Kobe Johnson. As a new look, West Virginia team shows up. Babe, we were talking about it at the beginning of the season last year. West Virginia had a lot to build off of. As Keeney Johnson is called for the offensive foul, it is drawn by Jalen Benjamin. But even more so this year, West Virginia has to find a new identity. But, you know, only nine points returning out of the guys they have coming back. So they have got a lot of scoring to fill in here. West Virginia pressing right off the bat. As the Mountaineers trying to establish a tone early. This is Dakota Lafue, the 6'5 junior from Hampton, Georgia, watched by Eric Stevenson of the Mountaineers. West, West Virginia and their familiar man to man, and um, look for both teams to play man to man. Mount St. Mary's plays about 98% man, so one on one basketball award. Yeah, half court to begin this game, and a. Out of bounds, forced by West Virginia. The double coming from Jimmy Bell of the Mountaineers, who, believe it or not, as big as he looks right now, dropped 75 pounds before the <laughs> beginning of the season. So you can imagine the size of that lad. Yeah, I think he was about 350 when he showed up on campus. They trimmed him down a little bit. Yep, got the D1 preparation, has him ready to go. Chance now for Mount St. Mary's. The jumper missed by Lafue, rebounded by Emmett Matthews. First game back in Morgantown. Emmett drives, kicks, Stevenson. Good look from three, no good. Rebound Matthews underneath Kobe Johnson, easy two. Kobe two good points by Matthews early on. Rebound and then an assist. And the confetti comes down in Morgantown. Lafue guarded there by Keeney Johnson. A few again from Benjamin into the middle. Jefferson, high percentage shot, couldn't hook that one in. Rebounded by Bell. Here come the Mountaineers. Matthews looked inside for Bell, deflected by Tinsley. Back come the Mountaineers. And a contested shot at the basket. Defended well, and Stevenson fouls the much smaller 5'10 Jalen Benjamin. He'll shoot two. And then Matthews had Jimmy Bell going down the middle. He's got a, the defense got a hand on the ball and stole it, but he had him open. Well, Eric Stevens, that certainly wasn't a cheap foul. No, nope, not at all. It's one of those fouls where you make sure the guy's not going to get the ball. He's not going to get the ball up there. He'll have to earn it at the strike. Well, Eric Stevenson looked so good for West Virginia in the charity exhibition against Bowling Green, certainly playing with a lot of energy as the first free throw missed by Jalen Benjamin. Third team preseason all MAAC. That's the Metro Atlantic Athletic Conference. More on Benjamin. The second team NEC last season, where Mount St. Mary's spent their conference year. It's his second season with Mount St. Mary's, and he misses both. And the student section loves it, Bake. Yes. Coach Inglestad said, had they stayed in the NEC, he probably would have been the player of the year, Benjamin. Yep, probably would have been picked to finish to win the NEC if they would have stayed in that conference. Uh, but down low, along with West Virginia in the preseason poll in their new conference. Jimmy Bell, nice spin move baseline, defended well by Tinsley, but he stepped out of bounds. Good defense from 24 in blue. Yeah, it was. Tinsley did a good job. Bell really wanted to try to get that. And I want to see Bell do that. We didn't get to see him do that in the exhibition, get the ball down low and score. They're going to need something out of him low. West Virginia will press right off the bat here. Benjamin gets the inbound. Matched up with Keeney Johnson. That's going to be a fun battle. Yes, baby. it is. 
Head coach Bob Huggins calls T.D. Johnson the most underrated defender in the Big 12, and he forces a turnover there. Picked up by Matthews. Emmett to the basket, finds space. Contested shot, no good. And it's last touched by Jimmy Bell. He was battling down there with Frontashek Barton. 6-7 out of the Czech Republic as we're getting started here. About two and change into this one. Bake, let's get your keys to the game. Oh, keys to the game for Mount St. Mary's. Lean on experience. They got a very, very veteran club here, and they need to get Benjamin going early. Thus far, T.D. Johnson has done a good job on them, but this guy can really score the ball. And for West Virginia? West Virginia, work on the recipes. In other words, different guys that are in there, how are they going to play together, and then ball security. West Virginia had 20 turnovers against Bowling Green. Oh, the turnover right there, but that's key for West Virginia. Take care of the ball. Eric Stevenson gets on the board here for the Mountaineers. 4-0 West Virginia. Triple to answer. Too short. Here's Emmett Matthews again underneath grabbing the board. Boy, Mount St. Mary really having uh, struggling to get a ball to go down. Keaty Johnson. Deep corner to Emmett Matthews. We'll get more on him later in his return to Morgantown. Grew up 40 minutes away from Eric Stevenson, the guy with the balls. He finds Johnson up high, has space to shoot. Bell goes up for it, and he's going to be called for the over the back. Bell over the back, good box out. That'll be his first personal. Third team foul already for West Virginia Bank. Yeah, well, you know, has, has a lot of guys he's going to play. So, yeah, I don't think foul trouble right off the bat is going to concern him because he's going to see what these guys can do anyway, so... Yep, he'll get an early big. Huggins usually with a team that rolls deep, and the change he makes is Mohamed Wagi, 6'10", 225 sophomore, out of the Bronx, New York. Also a change for Mount St. Mary's, as Xavier Lipscomb will check in. Benjamin, short floater, tip back towards the rim. Still battled for and missed again by Malik Jefferson. But well, West Virginia throws it away. All right, Eric Stevenson looking up the floor for Kobe Johnson. Kobe not uh, aware that the pass was coming out of bounds. This will be an inbound for Mount St. Mary's. Finished last season 14 and 18. Opened up the year with Villanova on the road. Well, West Virginia really needs to take advantage of the poor shooting by Mount St. Mary's. That's yeah, 4 0 West Virginia. LaFew, that's a tough two, and he sinks yeah, it. it is. Well, sooner or later, they're going to drop one. So, one score game here in Morgantown. Matthews to the corner for Kobe Johnson. Stevenson from Tacoma to Lacey to Muhammad Wagee, the Bronx. Wagee scores. Six two. Oh, that young man has a lot of potential. Hutch just said he really doesn't know how to play yet, but they've been working a lot with him. And they can see that was a nice little left handed shot. Yep, got a pro body type, got pro athleticism. It's really been a half court game, though, Bake early. Not much in transition. Bartone into the corner for Lipscomb. Xavier Lipscomb, 6 2 junior from D.C. Benjamin, match there on Wagee. It will get the kick. And that'll send us to our first break. It's West Virginia 6, Mount St. Mary's 2, 15 13 to play here in our first half in Morgantown. You're watching Big 12 Now on ESPN. Plus. There's never been a better time to get away. Isaiah Harris, the list goes on. Trey Mitchell, who has some experience at Texas, will expect to see him today. Joe Toussaint, the Iowa transfer, so a lot of experience, but they're new nonetheless, and it all takes a lot of time to gel. Yeah, again, that's those recipes, getting the guys together that are going to play well together. Open chance here for Mount St. Mary's. And Lipscomb able to hit, make this a one-point game. 6-5 West Virginia, and here is Joe Toussaint seeing his first action for the Mountaineers. Really familiar in this West Virginia system. Didn't take him that long to get adjusted to feel comfortable. And Stevenson is going to be called for a Man, quick second personal foul. Frustration foul. foul. Yep. He got stripped at half court and uh, trying to recover. And picks up another foul. He's going to, he's going to come out of the ball game. 
Yep, he'll take an early seat here, and that's uh, the energy that Eric Stevenson brings. But you got to keep yourself composed. He just is so passionate for basketball. There's no other way to say it. So West Virginia will bring in Josiah Harris and Seth Wilson as we begin this second frame here from Morgantown. Tucson, former Hawkeye, looks inside, goes outside instead for Emmett Matthews. Tucson rises high. Got speed there against Tinsley if he wants it. Step back. Woogie fighting for the rebound. Tough work underneath from Mount St. Mary's. No whistle yet. And finally we do get one. And Woogie, another guy that plays with yes. a certain enthusiasm. Right in the middle of things. That's what you like to see. A big guy get down on the floor like that. You know, he's got he's got the frame to put on a lot more weight, too. I don't know how much more Bob wants on him, but at 6'11", he could put on another 15, 20 pounds without a problem. So the ball will stay actually in the hands of the Mountaineers. I can save myself there. It's Mount St. Mary's possession. So you love that energy early for both of these teams as Mount St. Mary's will get the ball into the hands of Dakota Lafue in his junior season. Expected to make a big jump. Sophomore to junior, Bake, would you say is the biggest uh, jump in expectation? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Going to a new league like that, they're expecting a lot out of him. Matthews on the switch, opens things up for Tinsley. Three-pointer good for Mount. Well, Eight, Tins six. Tinsley's a good catch-and-shoot guy. The Mountaineers doubled away from him, left him open. He made them pay. First season with Mount St. Mary's was a Binghamton transfer. So this is his first game ever with the visiting Mountaineers. Emmett Matthews. McGee. Toussaint going to pull up. And it gets a good bounce. Count it. Joe Toussaint. And Joe going to be called for a foul. 15 foul against West Virginia already. That's the kind of foul Hutz hates to see. Uh, Joe just made a nice shot there, and then just a little over aggressive. And 94 feet from the basket to career. Uh, commit a foul, no, that's not what you want. Head coach Dan Engelstead has to like, I'm sure, the first six minutes and change. His team is all knotted up. But again, this is a Mount St. Mary's team. They visited number four Villanova to open the year last year. Lost that game 91 to 51. And then three games later, took on number 13 Kentucky in Lexington. Lost 80 to 55. And a long-range bomb missed by Mount St. Mary's, rebounded by Josiah Harris for West Virginia. Joe Tucson, quick on his feet, almost too quick. Seth Wilson to Tucson from Harris, and a whistle on the foul call. That'll be the first against Mount St. Mary's, and they will get Jalen Benjamin. I really like Joe Toussaint's attitude about everything. I mean, he says, I'm a player. I can fit in. I know what needs to be done. You know, playing in the Big Ten for three years, coming from Iowa. Yeah, he's been around the road, you know, around the road too. Feels more comfortable in this system than he did at Iowa. Just kind of said that he outgrew it, outgrew the coaching staff. Not a bad thing necessarily, and transfer portal friendly to guys like that. Here is Tucson again from the foul line. Good look, good putback attempt there by Harris, but he couldn't get it to fall. And it's last touch by Harris. Possession, Mount St. Mary's. So, Bake, this is kind of expected, I think, for the most part. You're kind of feeling out everything yeah. when, when they start to matter. Well, and, you know, defenses, for the most part, are going to be a little ahead of the offenses this time of year. And both teams are playing good, aggressive defense early on. Yeah, the non-negotiables for any successful program has, have to be effort, intensity, willingness to put your nose in there. Lips gum, travel. Yep. At 12.35 to go in our first half. Mo McGee with another nice defensive play from a big post player getting over and causing that travel. Some more non-negotiables for head coach Dan Engelstead. Transition defense, ball pressure. Never wants to see his team backpedal. And also really wants to be competitive on the rebounding front. 
And for now, Bake, 8-7, West Virginia just plus one. Yeah, he was very concerned about the rebounding. Didn't know how, you know, with West Virginia being as physical as they are. Matthews no good. Mowagi there to follow it up. Mowagi. And turnover-wise, two Bake, 5-4, West Virginia has committed one more turnover than Mount St. Mary's. As we said, they had 20 in the scrimmage against Bowling Green, and that's not what you want to see. That number has to, has to come down. Yeah, focus on West Virginia's preparation was getting a supremely positive turnover margin. Malik Jefferson, four on the shot clock. Gets the return pass and scores it. 10-10. Yeah, yeah, what a good two-man game there. Jefferson already graduated in grad school. Very intelligent player. Coach Eaglestad really likes that kid. All-time leading rebounder in Mount St. Mary's Division One history. Mount St. Mary's was a D2 team. And I go back to about, well, I mean, they've been here for two decades plus. Harris, no good. McGee, another offensive board for West Virginia. Too easy that time. And we got a whistle. And a time called. It'll be Mount St. Mary's keeping it tight here. The Mountaineers tied with one another. 10-10. Back after this from Morgantown on Big 12 Now on ESPN+. Plus. To his skill set and agility, among other things. Well, he's been held scoreless thus far, but don't think that he can't get going. Once he gets on the roll, he can really light it up. He had double figures in many, many games last year, 20-plus for this Mount St. Mary's team that is keeping things close here with West Virginia. Trey Mitchell into the game for the first time for West Virginia. The Texas transfer. You see limited action here. Still trying to get 100% healthy and a shot clock violation against the Mountaineers shot early. Did not start that possession with a full shot clock, Big. No, and that, that, your point guard has to see that. Yep. You know, that's, that's your quarterback on the court. And Joe just kind of lost track of time coming out of the timeout. But tell you He's got to be able to recognize that. Lafue for Mount St. Mary's, nearing the halfway mark here. Good tip by Mo Wagee, who might be West Virginia's best player up to this point. Right at this point, yes. I talked to Trey Mitchell today earlier, and I said, Trey, how are you right now? What, you know, with 75%? He said, nah, I'm about 85. He said, my conditioning is the thing that's really going to hold me back at this point. Yeah, that's tough. It's tough to get fully healthy. UMass and then Texas and now West Virginia. Bartone left it short. Rebound to Sun. There's one on his back. That's the recent entry. Jalen Gibson for Mount St. Mary's. Mitchell. We'll open up things for Seth Wilson. Mitchell gonna pull up. Knock it down. Well, gotta feel good. Had that first three go down. Likes that. No, no action, you know, prior to him coming into the game today because of that injury. Mount St. Mary's before the break was four of their last five from the field. They've missed their last two shots. West Virginia getting after it. Going to be another jump ball situation as Josiah Harris getting locked up there with Jalen Gibson, the 6'4 sophomore from Evanston, Illinois. West Virginia. Our officials in this game, Gary Maxwell, Tyler Cump, Steve Devine, also their first game. Oh, yeah. J.D. Cordelia has come into the game for Mount St. Mary's from the Netherlands, 6'9", 210-pound sophomore. Played 24 games as a freshman. Here is Toussaint looking to orchestrate the offense here for West Virginia. Toussaint. Yep. yep. And it's empty Good away. Call. Woogie on the offensive Mo side. Mo Woogie with that extended arm. I think he had pretty good position for a screen there. But watch the chicken wing come out right here. He had for something. That's a tight end block, Bake. <laughs> Jalen Benjamin back in the game. Frontashek Bartone. Switch there, Lefue. Gibson. 
Miss Strong, Bartone Strong, swatted by Mitchell, but a foul called late. I think that was on the following opportunity. Two free throws coming up for Mount St. Mary's at the 9.22 mark. Hud's not happy at all about that call. Bartone, in his third season as a bench player, playing in his 52nd career game, is the glue guy. He's reliable, good fundamentals, but misses the first free throw. And uh, not the numbers that you want from that position. I spoke too soon, 30%. <laughs> There's a promo with Chick-fil-A. I, I wish what I it knew was. what it was exactly, but uh... All right, that's another miss for Mount St. Mary's And the Mount now 0 for 4 from the free throw line, so Leaving some points on the board here early three-point game Great enough of a difference to take the lead look at Tucson's handles Mitchell with 13 on the shot clock spots up Harris whistle hold underneath and it'll be against Mount St. Mary's Cordelia grabbed, uh, grabbed Mo McGee inside and McGee getting a, uh, getting a very deserved rest yep. Put in a good shift nice battle between two long boys and we got Jimmy Bell coming back into the game for West Virginia so he's fresh And again, this is a West Virginia team playing it without Eric Stevenson who will see much of the floor on a regular basis But he got two personal fouls early. So that's a lack of West Virginia's leading score Along with Emmett Matthews in that charity exhibition three on the shot clock Tucson has to get one up Seth Wilson at the buzzer no good Harris comes flying through to grab the rebound but counts secure it Cordelia surrounded and protects it well. Boy, Joe, uh, Josiah Harris was up on that. It's a shame he couldn't corral it because he did a good job. And a floater no good. Jimmy Bell gets away with one there. And the body contact against Jalen Gibson, but went straight up. Tucson goes to the basket, can't finish. Ah. And taken away by Seth Wilson. Wilson swings it to Bell. Tucson, Josiah Harris, in and out. You can look at Josiah Harris. That shot didn't go down, but you can look at his form and tell that he can really shoot the ball. Huck six, likes this young man. Yep, 6 7 freshman from Canton, Ohio. Cordelia. Lafew. Bell comes to help. Mountaineers playing tight. Six on the shot clock. Whistle going to keep it here. Yep, I think they got Trey Mitchell, uh, Trey Mitchell with a push inside. Baskets hard to come by in the last couple of minutes. What he won't tell you that, but it means a ton to him. It really does, and I'm just so happy for him. Yeah, and he's he said that it has finally sunk in. Sunk in, yeah. Yeah, it's been long enough, I guess, and uh, he's definitely put his time in. Let's say that first free throw made by Malik Jefferson, the first free throw made all game from Mount St. Mary's Bay. Yeah, but you know, if you told you know, Daniel Engelstad that you, your leading scorer would be scoreless at this point, and you were over from the free throw line until just now, and you're only down three points, would you take it? I'd say he'd say, yes, I would. I want my guy to score some, but we're still right there without our big guy, really, our big gun really scoring. Yeah, numbers-wise for both of these teams to see some improvement in the shooting category. West Virginia, 33%. Mount St. Mary's at 24. Seth Wilson matched with Dakota Lafew. Gets by him. Going to kick it to Tucson. James Oconquo into the game for the first time. He's occupying that near box. Gets the feed from Bell. Back from Oconquo. Jimmy kicks it with seven on the shot clock to Wilson. Tough two. He makes it look good. Seth Wilson has really, really been working on his shooting. I tease him all the time. I said, are you going to make one tonight? He says, yeah, I'm going to make it. If I get to shoot him, I'm going to make it. Yeah, one of the uh, few holdovers from last season after that mass exodus for West Virginia. Bell had a touch off of him last yep. after he made a nice play, so it will stay with Mount St. Mary's. Game is happening fast, Bank. It really is. Yep. Johnson checks back in for West Virginia. Kitty Johnson. We'll check back in for West Virginia. 
as Tucson goes for a seat. Inbound to Tinsley. Nice pick from Keedy, but it stays with Mount St. Mary's. And the triple, no good. From DeAndre Thomas, the 6'5 senior from Inglewood, California. West Virginia really fortunate. Mount St. Mary's had executed the inbounds play. Tinsley just couldn't get the ball. He had a layup if he could have controlled the ball. No field goals in the last six attempts for Mount St. Mary's. Keedy Johnson rises up. Nice dish from Emmett Matthews. Yes, it was. Excellent pass from Emmett. West Virginia by five. Tinsley, the handoff to LaFew. Look at Keedy staying right with him. Until then, floater looking good. Not enough on it. Rebound, Emmett. Adrian Johnson. You'll find Matthews looking really calm here and just misses the reach of Jimmy Bell. Well, Jimmy wanted to sit down in the post area, and Emma just led him too much. But sometimes you've got to give that post player time enough to really establish his position inside, and that's what Bell was trying to do. Emma just led him too much and too quick. 607 to go. Here in our first half of action, I think it all does come back, you know, a lot of different matchups, a lot of different sure. combinations of players to use, so that stuff's going to get worked out. Tendencies, trends. Exactly. Thomas Jefferson traveled. No field goals in the last six minutes for Mount St. Mary's. West Virginia has upped its shooting percentage to 40%. As we're ready to see Emmett Matthews and Keedy Johnson start things back up as Tinsley goes for a seat. Bartone from the Czech Republic is back in there. And a matchup with Okonkwo. Out here's a look to run a set. Out of this inbound. Matthews got loose. Okonkwo looking to feed Bell. Have to do something with it. Yeah. Shot clock at 10. Matthews against DeAndre Thomas. Nice feed. James Okonkwo. Good. Yeah. That bucket all the way from Maidenhead, England. And give him and Matthews another assist. That was a nice play. He set that whole thing up by driving baseline. Defense collapsed. Okonkwo wide open. Mountaineers by seven, largest lead in the game. And West Virginia stand with that pressure defense. 6 0 run for West Virginia. Underneath Bartone, short, and a foul to send it the other way. An offensive foul against Mount St. Mary's at the 5 0 4 mark here in half number one. One of the problems Mount St. Mary's is having right now is that when they get the ball inside, they're rushing shots. I don't know if they're intimidated by somebody maybe blocking it, but they are rushing shots, and therefore they are missing a ton of those little, kind of little simple shots that should go down. Would you say it's a size thing, Bake? Because West Virginia matches up, I think, a little larger. Yes. Keity Johnson quickly over the timeline. Conquo, Matthews got free. No good, and a foul on yep. Jefferson going to keep it here. Takes a lot of force to move Jimmy Bell out of the way, but he did it that time. Bell had good uh, offside position, and the only way that uh, he was going to move Jefferson was going to move it was Chevy. That'll be his first personal team. Fourth foul on Mount St. Mary's. West Virginia has already racked up eight against themselves. But for the most part, have been pretty good in the second half of this first half, foul-wise. Off the inbound, Seth Wilson. Seth Wilson is one of those people who thought could take a Taz Sherman or Sean McNeil place shooting the ball from the perimeter. And we'll use that with a, a grain of salt, obviously. Can't match the contributions from Taz last year in a year, but he's got the skill set to yes, do he it. Does. Benjamin falling forward. Strong rebound from Tonka. <laughs> Tonka. I told him before the game I wanted eight rebounds. He said, I'll get him. He's still a few shy of that, but we'll see. That's Jimmy Bell after the Tonka truck. Oh, he almost had it there. Takes a couple of bounces. Keedy Johnson from way downtown. Bell fighting. Controlling, knocked loose. 
We're fortunate he didn't get over the back call, but he'll take that. That's the way he's got to go at it, too. Final break to take in our first half. It is West Virginia on a bit of a run. Mountaineers 21, Mount St. Mary's 12. You're watching West Virginia and Mount St. Mary's on ESPN+. Plus. The grad assistant under Hugs in 06 and 07. And when Hugs came here, well, so did Josh. He told me his loyalty to Huggins kept him here so long. And raising his three kids with wife Brandy, he just loved the family atmosphere. You know, and not many people would wait 15 years for this opportunity. But you know what, guys? As the old saying goes, good things come to those who wait. And not many people want to wait 15 years in this day and age to get their first coaching job. Yeah, that's an excellent point, Amanda. Uh, Bake? You know, we have Eric Martin move on to yes. South Carolina State, so things opened up for Josh Schuyler. But again, coaching position is not all glamorous all the time, if ever, really. I mean, it is a grind. It is a grind. But, you know, the one thing that will never be questioned about Hugs is loyalty. His guys get with him, and he takes care of them. As long as you do your job, you've got a job above. West Virginia 21, Mount St. Mary's 12. Host Mountaineers will make a switch. Muhammad Wookie, but a nice first shift, will come back into the game to replace Jimmy Bell, who gets a talking to from Coach Hugs on his way back. Well, I like the aggression that we saw out of Jimmy Bell this last time out on the court for him. Let's see if Mount St. Mary's can put anything together. Victim of an 8-0 run before the break. Off the glass, shots just not falling for the visiting Mountaineers. Katie Johnson slipped. Oh, and they get him for a foul. And we'll get Jalen Gibson, the 6'4 sophomore. Oh, let's see here. Was there contact? Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, there's yeah not no, no. Honestly, I was a bit surprised, but seeing it again, yeah. Just enough to throw him off balance. 318 to go, first half. West Virginia with Emmett Matthews, Keedy Johnson, Seth Wilson, James O'Conquill, Muhammad McGee out here. First uh, combination of this five. Seth Wilson going to pull up. Oh, it falls in, and Coach Engelstad does not like that. That's a rare bounce for a basket. But good shooters will get those type of bounces. Mount St. Mary's. Need an answer here. Makeable two ends up an air ball from the few. Emmett Matthews. Seth Wilson again, short. Oconco, nice tip to Emmett Matthews. He's going to take it himself and score. Oconco won't get an assist on that because Emmett caught him dribble. I think they ought to give a guy an assistant situation like that. Uh, a 13 nil run for West Virginia as the whistle blows with 2.24 to go in our first half. That was all effort on that last position for West Virginia. Yeah. Well, Conquer. Might huh? have an impact on this. How about West Virginia doubling up Mount St. Mary's 25 to 12 already? Yep. Two twenty-four to go as we get things started again. Benjamin finds Jefferson wide open. DeAndre Thomas lost it, picked up by Oconquo. And smacks Keedy in the face, who recovers quickly. Seth Wilson. Mountaineers gaining in confidence, gaining in flow. Woogie opens up, fouled by Jefferson. Yep. Now that pass from Johnson just now into a D, that's what you like. Let that pass player get set up down low. Had Jefferson pinned on his back. Not a good foul by Jefferson. He's got to try to get it down in front. And if you can't, you back off. But you don't want to reach and foul. That'll be his second personal. Team eighth. Or team seventh, rather. And Muhammad Wagi heads to the free throw line. First of a one and one, no good. Rebounded by Oconquo. Tipped by Woogie again. Loose underneath, behind Woogie. Just effort. Oconquo and the 
getting a, they are just absolutely getting an all types of effort here. You'll be a fan favorite quickly if you oh, keep doing my. that. Benjamin needs one here from out St. Mary's and gets yeah, one. Tough finally. Three-point basket by Benjamin. And again, don't go to sleep on a guy like that. I've seen again, great shooters, hit one, and then it's on. Finally, an answer to a 15-0 run for West Virginia. Wilson, peeling off these screens well. Might find a pass off one of those soon underneath. All the way to the basket, Keeney Johnson fouled. Mount St. Mary's really late getting over for help defense. And it'll be a shooting foul regardless. It's just whether he gets two or not. First on LeFew. At the line for West Virginia, Keeney Johnson, two shots. And he'll get two shots, so call that a continuation. West Virginia. Ready to get Josiah Harris back in the game. Katie Johnson sinks the first free throw. 75% free throw shooter last season. As Harris enters, we've been looking for Eric Stevenson. He's been in foul trouble. Two against him early in the first half. Keating in this game. Three points. Mountaineers get seven from Wilson. And he sinks it again. Well, he said he was going to try to shut Benjamin down. And thus far, he has done a good job along with Toussaint in limiting his touches. And we asked Coach Hugs in a yes or no segment on his radio show, is Keedy Johnson the most underrated defender in the Big 12? And he said yes. Here's Benjamin. Under a minute to go, first half. Mountaineers, the hosts, by 15. Barton, Thomas, double team comes. Barton keeps it alive. Tinsley gets a perfect look. Can't convert. Wagee fights for the rebound and tipped out by Barton. 12-second differential between game clock and shot clock. How active has been uh, Wagee been? Yeah. Oh, goodness. Yep. And we get a whistle and a timeout called Taken by, West by West Virginia. So 30 seconds, and in that time, we'll show you West Virginia's Seth Wilson. They get words of advice, nicest way possible, from Coach Hooks. <laughs> All right, back after it. West Virginia will save some time here. Keaton Johnson getting the inbound from Josiah Harris. Wilson. Oh, well. <laughs> Would he call for the offensive foul real quick? Well, you know, yeah, that was an offensive foul. Part of that is uh, Seth Wilson's fault. He's got to let him get set. He can't start his dribble before that post player gets up there and gets set. Because if he's moving at all, that official is going to call the foul on McGee for moving. So Seth's got to be a little more patient. Yeah, Hugs thought it was a little soft, but what's new? Six second differential between game clock and shot clock. Tinsley for Mount St. Mary's. Well, Benjamin had that cut if he wanted it. There it is. Thomas for three. In and out. Rebound Barton. Put back too strong. Tinsley can't get it. 13 seconds to go. See, Barton just, just rushed that shot, too. Another kick. Another wide open look for Thomas, and he makes West Virginia pay. 30 to 18. Two seconds to go. Matthew. Short on the bank, and that'll do it for half number uh, half number one. West Virginia by 12. The host mounts half ended. Andrew, thank you, man. I mean, that's an excellent point, right? When we saw West Virginia grabbing those offensive boards, it's because we had probably about three white uniforms to two blue, and with the size exactly. advantage West Virginia has, it's going to be the Mountaineers all the way. All right, we are ready to go. West Virginia sends out Emmett Matthews, Keith Johnson, Eric Stevenson, Toby Johnson, and Jimmy Bell is the starting five for Mount St. Mary's. We've got Jalen Benjamin with the ball right now. Malik Jefferson challenged by Jimmy Bell. Also got DeAndre down there. George Tinsley and a tip in for Mount St. Mary's as Dakota LaFue rounds out the five. Jefferson with a good tip. 
Jimmy Bell had to go over to try to help defensively. That left Jefferson open to go inside. Keity Johnson finds Matthews. Stevenson trying to send his defender. Hops to pass instead. Shot clock at 10 as Keity drives. Keity shoots. Can't get it to go. Rebound by DeAndre Thomas. And then to Jalen Benjamin. Can't get it to go. And swiped out of bounds by Eric Stevenson. Well, Benjamin had a real good look just now. At, uh, that's one that he would normally knock down. Yeah. Jalen Benjamin is just one for five in this game. Inbound, Jefferson. Made tough by Bell. He grabs the board. Jefferson with another rush shot inside. Keita Johnson. Double team backs off. Kobe Johnson working inside. Lost it. All right, big. We saw one half go in the books. We'll, we'll revisit your keys to the game. What does Mount St. Mary's have to do? Well, they lean on experience. They've got a bunch of experienced guys, so they're not going to fall. And uh, Benjamin needed to get started early for them, which he didn't. But again, they're down 10, and this guy can light it up at any time. And for the Mountaineers, have we seen them execute on well, their Well, work on the recipes. When I say recipes, the different parts that you're going to put together. And then ball security. West Virginia with 11 turnovers in the first half, which is more than Hudson would like to see. So they've got to take care of the ball. This is DeAndre Thomas from Mount St. Mary's. Had some space along the baseline. Kicks it to Benjamin, waiting for him to get hot. Short rebound, Stevenson. In his Mountaineer debut... Hits. He's got four points. Now it's one of those guys, too. Once he gets hot, he can really light it up. Benjamin goes up against Bell. No call. Rebound Stevenson. Has space to operate. Matthews, Keedy, Johnson. Triple. Tough break for Mount St. Mary's. West Virginia makes it play. And they want to tie him out. Yep. And then West Virginia comes down and drops the three on him. West Virginia up 15. Mount St. Mary's made the first field goals in our second half, but I think that's a good timeout as we welcome you back into the WVU Coliseum to slow things down and really keep your team in this one. Well, he knows how quick things can get out of shape if you don't stop a run. Oh, Benjamin fouled by Keedy Johnson. As he'll shoot two. This is a Mount St. Mary's team that heads into new territory, the MAAC. Check out the composition of their class. Mostly an experienced team, but you get four freshmen. As long as you can get them to stick around, that's right. You got them there. But the three, the three graduate and the two seniors, that's the core group of his team right there. He's just hoping to bring the other guys along. But again, we were talking with Coach Engelstad and says the same stuff that might pull other players away from certain programs at a higher level, Power 5 level, not exactly as prominent in this one, or in his level, rather. Both free throws made by Jalen Benjamin. He's got five points now. West Virginia, on the other hand, nine different players scoring. Seven for Keedy Johnson and seven for Seth Wilson. Keedy Johnson... Trying to find Bell. Good defense underneath. Shot clock at nine for Kobe Johnson. Boy, they're really trying to find Bell. Jefferson did a good job of defending Bell inside just now. Oh, and slipped out of the hands of the few. Mount St. Mary's needed that. Boy, that's the kind of turnover if your coach Inglestad just got. We just can't have those. And poor Jimmy Bell ran all the way to the other end of the floor. <laughs> He's been working hard to get position, and the Mountaineers are really looking for him just now. I hope they can find him. I want to see him be able to do something down low. Looking for his first points. Almost three minutes into half number two. Here's Jimmy. Shot clock at 10 for Stevenson. I keep looking for him, and an offensive foul called against Jimmy Bell underneath. You know, that was a nice, nice job 
Yep, that's a good call. There was a shove off inside. Well, that's West Virginia continuing to work on their recipes, Big, trying to get different kind of looks. Yeah. yeah. One, one part of that recipe that's not there yet is Jimmy Bell. He's really struggling right now. From Saginaw, Michigan, attended Moberly Community College last season, averaged 9-9. Nine and nine. Martone, Lefew, for Mount St. Mary's. Gonna will their way back into this one. Thomas, Thomas, that's a tough shot. Bell goes crashing in and he's called for the foul. Jimmy Bell called for the first goal. That's his third. That'll be his third. Yeah. Well, really, nobody. With, uh, with the body off of coming in there, he, was, he had able to get that rebound without a lot of resistance. Jimmy Bell came over and then fouled him. And Muhammad Wagi will check in. A lot more basketball left to play for him. Barto misses it. And Wagee rebounds. Mount St. Mary's, 4 of 10 from the line. And when you go into a hostile environment like they're in here in Morgantown, you can't afford to have you know, four free throw shooting. Those are three points that you're not getting. Eight on the shot clock for Keaty Johnson. And another offensive foul to send it the other way. Boy, that was a late call that time. Well, you know, that's the third offensive foul that McGee's had. That's something that they will work on in practice. That's why West Virginia in a bit of a situation here. Is you have three on McGee and three on Bell. Yep, he started to, he started to push inside, and they're going to call that. That's interesting. Because what you could say is, you know, moving a screen. I feel like he was trying to get into space, but correct me if I'm wrong. No, it just, he swallowed up the guard, and that was that was just enough. Okay. Four minutes into half number two, Jalen Benjamin had a poke loose, deflected into the backcourt, and Eric Stevenson just picked up his third. On Xavier Lipscomb. So West Virginia got to be careful here. As we step aside, Mountaineers 35, Mount St. Mary's 22. On Big Gold now on ESPN Plus. Top golf, and then something he really enjoyed was taking them out in the nature. He said some of his guys have never just walked along a path. They jumped into a lake. They made a great day of it, and he said it was just a lot of fun. One thing that really made him laugh and made all of us giggle on the crew, he said that a lot of his guys were walking down the path, and they saw what was dog scat, if that is the correct way to say it, and they thought it was bear scat, so they were all freaked out that it was a bear, but it was just dog. So it was just a lot of great stories that he was telling us, and just you could just tell that they just had a lot of fun as a team, and when you have that kind of team chemistry, it really shows in these games, Andrew. Yeah, thank you, man. I mean, that's an excellent point because we were speaking with Eric Stevenson for West Virginia, and he was lauding West Virginia's ability to hang out as a team with one another, which is, you know, sometimes it happens, sometimes it doesn't. And maybe you have clicks, maybe you don't, but to not have that be a thing, extremely important. Now you reach moments of adversity. Yeah, that, that's exactly right. You know, you, you find out about the guys off the court. You know, you know what they are on the court, but, you know, it's important to know what they're like off the court. Keity Johnson with a nice play to get West Virginia in possession. And uh, I think if it was a bear, you'd probably know. <laughs> a little bit different in, in, in texture. A little bit. <laughs> Kobe. Yeah. Evan Matthews. We're going to take one contested. Nice shot from Evan Matthews. He's got five. Emmett Matthews is going to bring so much more to this team than just scoring. Another short opportunity. Another rush missed. shot. Yep. Cordelia that time from Mount St. Mary's. But Emmett and Eric Stevenson just look more composed. But that's what happens when you're in your fourth and fifth year. Exactly. Keaty Johnson had it rejected by Bartone. 
Jalen Benjamin, not a fan favorite in Morgantown. Gets by Keedy Johnson. Tried the alley-oop to Cordelia, who converts that time. Coach Engelstad telling his players to get back, but he's ready to bring in four changes. Yeah, he, he, he'll go 10 deep, which he has done up to this point. And he just, he's just looking for any type of a spark right now. And a tough shooting night for Mount St. Mary's with just 22%. And late foul, and they will get Jalen Gibson for the trip on Emmett Matthews, whether he meant to or not. Emmett just really taking his time. Uh, looks so comfortable with that shot. He's another one that has been out, uh, out doing a lot of extra shooting. Great to have him back again. And you know, he's only, he's one of two players that left the program and came back. Levi Phillips back early on went to Oklahoma State for a, a brief time and came back. And we think Emmett is the second guy that has done that. Yeah, and it was one of those things where he played a season, that was the COVID season, foul away from the ball against Mount St. Mary's. They will get Jefferson for that one as he will pick up his third. One of those seasons where you play college basketball with no fans, with no family. They're on the other side of the country. You only see them every now and then. And, you know, at a certain time, you need something else out of life. So it wasn't bad terms that he left on. No. Says he never should have left, and now he's back. So value in everything. Keity Johnson trying to get some help from Oconquo. Jump save, Kobe Johnson, but it's out of play. James Oconquo got a whack to the head. Going after that rebound. This will belong to Mount St. Mary's. 13.56 to go. Here in half number two. The Mount just one of their last seven from the field. Ooh, get Keity Johnson for the reach in. Nice contact. It'll be his third. Big West Virginia's got some foul trouble here. If it wasn't evident enough already, that's Keedy with three, Eric Stevenson with three, Jimmy Bell with three, Muhammad McGee with three. That is uh, not good. No, thank goodness they do have a deep bench. Yep. The thing is, I think to a certain extent, a lot of times early on in the year, officials might call it a little tighter than they will once the season starts. Yep. Yeah. Trying to let guys avoid bad habits. Wide open slam dunk for Jefferson on the other end. 38-26. Yeah, miscommunication by the Mountaineer defense. This is Joe Toussaint. Oconquo. Josiah Harris in the game for West Virginia, occupying that far corner. Matthews, beautiful. Mountaineer lead back to 14. He just looks smooth. Yes, he does. Tinsley, space down the middle. Finds the kick. That's a good pass to DeAndre Thomas. Another big bucket for Mount St. Mary's. As well, you said, Thomas shoots 40% from three. And now Bob Huggins wants a timeout. Good things organized. West Virginia has its lead cut from 15 to 11. Mount St. Mary's finally, maybe, getting hot. Three of their last three before that, shooting 22%, big. ESPN plus two. Well, he says, you know, you got to play some games like West Virginia with the USC's because if they get in the big dance later on, having that experience would be great. Cash a few checks here and there. Yeah. Seth Wilson in the game for West Virginia. Finds Oconquo. Shot clock at 10. Tucson. And they call here Josiah Harris. Good jumper range. And Jefferson and Oconquo tied up. No whistle. Yep. Maybe you like the no calls. The game moves on. Lafue down low to Tinsley. Match up there with Wilson, who punches that one all the way to the backcourt. Oconquo grabs it out of midair. Took it away from Benjamin. Seth Wilson, bullet pass, Emmett Matthews. Nice, nice decision by Seth Wilson. And that will get the crowd back into it. 
big defensive play at one end and getting a layup at the other. Jumper short in stride. Toussaint in the air. Matthews! Big buckets for Emmett Matthews. An official welcome back. Lafew blocked by Okonkwo. And Emmett can't save it. It'll stay with Mount St. Mary's. He is back. And he is well liked at this point. 11:33. I mean, he's only had a couple of players leave and come back in his career, and those are guys who just quit. And Huggins allowed them to come back on the team, and that was when he was at Cincinnati. He says Emmett was a much different scenario because it was a family situation. And now that Emmett's back, the main focus for fans apparently is his hair. He had beautiful locks his first go around here, but he cut him off last season. And Hugg says that the question he gets asked the most is, "What did he do to his hair?" And Warren. Hugs was actually bragging on your locks back in the day when you guys played together, and he said that your locks, Warren, actually rivaled Emmett's hair pre-cut. Is this true? Uh, no, no, <laughs> he can't see very well. <laughs> well, this was maybe a few years ago. <laughs> I don't know, Big. I did see your, uh, I did see your headshot from back in the day. It looked pretty good. Uh, it, it didn't have the bounce on no. Emmett's hair, and maybe that's he might have you on that. Well, big bucket for Mount St. Mary's as we came back in West Virginia. Couldn't get an answer. Jalen Benjamin now matched up with Josiah Harris. It's a credit to their ball club. They're not going away. No. You know, they're they're st staying close. It's still West Virginia in control. But... They're going to call a kick on Okonkwa. I think it is at his foot there. But uh, nonetheless, Mount St. Mary's possession. 20 on the shot clock, put on. And now yeah, you're right. I mean, not that they would roll over, but. It's really up to West Virginia to make life difficult. And Toussaint will be called for the foul. That'll be his second. Officially, Mount St. Mary's bench and Eric Stevenson. It's a lot. It's a lot for a little. Benjamin hits his first. Benjamin again here. Made them both. So if you just tuned in, West Virginia up 11 in this game, had a foul against Joe Toussaint, and then had three technical fouls. Two to Mount St. Mary's and one to West Virginia. So now Trey Mitchell shoots free throws for West Virginia. So we had a big old development here. It was something very little. And Mitchell will get a second opportunity. Mountaineers in this game from the line. There's two of four, make that three of five. And should be West Virginia possession bake if I know my basketball well enough. Believe that it is. All right, let's get back to the basketball. Tucson to Oconquo. Josiah Harris, Trey Mitchell. Out here for West Virginia along with Seth Wilson. Let's see who captures this moment, Bake. There was a lull in it, so who, who, who capitalizes? West Virginia seemed to have everything really going for them with that uh, spurt by Emmett Matthews. Air ball from Toussaint. Yeah, but the law favors. Mount St. Mary's, and they get a foul as Bartone went up. Toussaint and Oconco over there. I they think, get, they, get I think they got the foul. Oconco, the yeah. fact that he came down with his arm. Well, they get Toussaint for the foul. He was in the hands. Oh, but the, the Toussaint, they called yeah. the foul on. Okay. I thought they called. It wouldn't have surprised me to see him call it on James yeah, because yeah. he did follow through with the arm. Yep. Either one you can understand. Well, Mount St. Mary's is about to bring this game to 10, Bake. Barton can't. Trey Mitchell grabs the board.
Mountaineers on the set. And they will get Jalen Benjamin for the call away from the play. He's trying to stop Wilson on his peel. You know, here's where composure, and it's tough to do when you're in the oh, heat of battle. But the officials are going to call it right now. You can find yourself picking up a lot of fouls quickly because these guys don't want this game to get out of control. So what might not have been a foul in the first half might be a foul here because they want to keep this thing under control. True. Solid point. West Virginia already with 10-plus against them. Sixth foul against Mount St. Mary. So next one puts West Virginia in the bonus. 15 on the shot clock. Past the halfway mark of half number two. Tucson pulls up, tough shot, bouncing, slammed in. Trey Mitchell with a hot pop. Mountaineers need big plays like that. Offensive foul. Two big about the back plays by Trey Mitchell. Offensive foul. And you know, we didn't see him in the charity exhibition against Bowling Green. I'll tell you what, might be West Virginia's impact player down there. Oh, line. my. What a scoop. But again, shows the depth that West Virginia has because in multiple sequences in this game, it's belonged to single individuals, really. You're right. Mitchell looks off his defender in and out. DeAndre Thomas, on it there by Josiah Harris. He got to get it over. Keaton Johnson, no, that was Tucson getting after it. Frees it up for Mitchell. Josiah Harris fouled. The hustle by West Virginia at half court set that whole thing up. That's what you got to see. You got to have that. Third. We'll get Cordelia for his third foul. Good composure from Mitchell. And Harris won all that one. So Josiah Harris won't for his first points of the game. Mount St. Mary's without a field goal in the last two and a half minutes. Benjamin and Bartone and Benjamin back in. For Mount St. Mary's, Lipscomb and Cordelia out. One of two for Josiah Harris. Lead back to 14. Mountaineers have not cleared that 20 point mark yet. Would love to get there. Jefferson leading the way for Mount St. Mary's. He's got eight. Thomas, offensive foul to send it the other way. And for Jefferson, that'll be his fourth. A lot of offensive fouls. See, that's a call that I think in the middle of the year, had we not had what happened earlier, that probably is not a foul. And Cordelia will re-enter. Three turnovers in the last minute 40 for Mount St. Mary's. At the 8.28 mark of our second half. Tucson. Wilson calls Harris high. Trey Mitchell fakes. It's the foul on Barton. It's a big body, big. Yes, he is. Can score it from anywhere. And he'll go to the line to shoot two. That's the tenth against Mount St. Mary's. Trey Mitchell. So Trey Mitchell in this game with six points. He's two of four from the field. Second trip to the free throw line, and he is now two of three. Trey Mitchell again going to Texas last season. Started 17 of 24. Nine points per game, four rebounds per game. 
Eric Stevenson after a little while on the bench back in the ball game. Hugs wants to keep him in the fold. He's really struggled tonight for the most part. Yep. Eric Stevenson just four points. And four fouls plus the technical. We well, might as well use him, right? Yes. Or we're gonna have to have him, so. Yep. And Tucson called for the foul again on Jalen Benjamin. 755 to go. Half number two. It is West Virginia up 16, 50 to 34 against the opposing Mountaineers. You're watching Big 12 now on ESPN Plus to duplicate the shooting performance again. They're just shooting 26% in this game. Might be able to claw their way in through field goals as Joe Toussaint was called for the last foul against West Virginia. And Benjamin hits his first. That'll give him eight points. Tough night shooting for him. He is just one of eight, but is now five of seven from the free throw. And he gets them both. That's a uh, cold start from Mount St. Mary. Certainly didn't help him. They missed a lot of easy shots in that first oh, half. Yeah. Took them forever to get on track, you know, with the, with the basket inside. Yep, they really did. And if they were to make some of those easy shots, they would have a much closer they game. Certainly would. Josiah Harris. Three-pointer, no good. Big board. Lucky. Scores and he's back out there. With eight. Oh, Tell you what, Jalen Benjamin has not slowed down, Big. No. Credit to this kid. He wants it. He has wow. got it. That's, that's, a, that's a big time shot. Benjamin. That wasn't bad defense. I mean, he just he just made a very, very good shot. Now West Virginia has to answer back. And now St. Mary's needs to stop. They get him for a foul instead at the 702 mark. Okay, Two free throws coming up for Mohamed Wagi. Mo is 0 for 1 from the line. The line now we're ready to reintroduce, reintroduce Evan Matthews. Matthews. Shot that just, uh, Josiah Harris shot for the first time that I've seen him shoot this year when he did not have any type of rhythm at all. That was kind of just a herky jerky shot. He's a great shooter, and uh, you know, he'll sit down and think about that and come back. Yeah, just the freshman Tinsley is in, Bartone is out, Malik Jefferson is also re entered for Mount St. Mary's, and he has four personal fouls, so eye on him. In and out from Wagi. Seven minutes to go. The few had it picked by Mitchell. Matthews, Mitchell, all the way. A good D match up there by West Virginia. Keedy Johnson is back on Jalen Benjamin. Well, Keedy has three personal fouls. And that's tough. Because that just changed to four. Keedy Johnson called the first one. Wow. Four. The clock stopping at 627. Here's West Virginia's bucket the other way. And McMatthews recognizing exactly where the ball needed to go. Cotton Mitchell coming down the middle for an easy layup. Kobe Johnson's at the check back in for West Virginia after the first free throw, but Benjamin misses. So again, Bake, Mount St. Mary's 12 of 44 in this game, and a lot of, you know, probably must make buckets. And then they're also 9 of 17 from the free throw line. Wow. One of two for Jalen Benjamin. He's now got 13 in the game. To lead all scores. Kobe Johnson in. Go, 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 go. 
Opens up. And he scores it. I'm glad to see Trey Mitchell. Boy, court awareness. He recognized that backdoor cut. Pass was right on the money. Yeah, and Trey Mitchell is out there for maybe more than we thought we'd see him. Yes. Another tough shot from Jalen Benjamin. He's almost single-handedly keeping his team in yeah. this game right now, Big. So. And he got not to any kind of start at all. This thing would be much closer. Stevenson kind of slipped, stays with it too much. A late blocking call against Jalen Benjamin. That'll be his fourth. And Stevenson will shoot. With 5.42 to go here in half number two. Franta Bartone is coming up soon for Mount St. Mary's. West Virginia is a team. Seven for 11 from the free throw line. First one off the front of the rim. Again, a rare miss and a rare night, really, for Eric Stevens. Yes, yes. 98% free throw shooter, South Carolina. Gets that one. 58-42, Mountaineers by 16. Here in our season opener for West Virginia and Mount St. Mary's. LaFue, got it. Trends here for Mount St. Mary's, four of their last four falling in. West Virginia has been able to answer their three of their last three. Boy, that was good ball move by Mount St. Mary's. West Virginia kept trapping and switching up. They recognized the, the play and uh, found the open man. That's even with Jalen Benjamin on the bench right now. Mitchell, Matthews back to Trey Mitchell. Pittsburgh native. Fades away too much. Good board opportunity. And that was blocked by Bartoon. Wagee after it toughly. Possession stays with the Mountaineers. Stevenson. Trying to force things here. Mitchell. Trey Mitchell. Trey Mitchell. I tell you what, Bake. And this is 85%. A hundred's going to be nice for West Virginia. For a guy who has not seen the court for ages. Yes. I mean, a little bit of practice, but that's been it. 13 points for Mitchell. And Wagi lost it. It's one of those ones. How am I going to throw this down? Yes. Should I tomahawk it? Should I? And then he also heard footsteps because Jefferson was trying to track him down. He'll hear about that from the guys later on tonight. <laughs> once, once the W is secured, Bake. But Wagi has had an excellent game. Nine points. In his collegiate debut, bad foul for Mitchell. And contact there at the end by Emmett Matthews. Four seventeen to go, half number two. West Virginia 61, Mount St. Mary's 45. And really, teams have been trading baskets back and forth in late stages of the second half. And Matthews gave a fist pump to yep. Jalen Gibson at the end of it. No harm in that. Gibson hits the first. You know, I read Jalen Gibson had a dunk on television that was the ESPN dunk, uh, play of the night. Oh, yeah. You know how they have the top ten? He had a dunk last year, and that was the top play. Mount St. Mary's keeps it alive. Mitchell turned it over. Benjamin. High arcing bank. 61-49. Will not go away. No. 18 for Benjamin. Third team preseason NAAC. Get him up there on that list. 348 to go. Eric Stevenson. Yes. There's the West Virginia answer base. It is. No hesitation either.
A few. Another one from Mount St. Mary's over the top of Eric Stevenson. That is three-pointer number nine for Mount St. Mary's. I want to give Coach Ingolstadt's team a lot of credit. They had a number of times where they could have folded it and just haven't done it. 64-52. Mount St. Mary's with six threes in the second half. Three on one. Benjamin all the way. Left it short. Stevenson fighting for the rebound. It's going to stay with Mount St. Mary's with 2.58 to go. Crunch time for both of these teams, but it's Jalen Benjamin single-handedly keeping the Mountaineers, the visitors, in this game. Check out this one. I'm sure he meant to bake it. And another one. This time, LaFew. Tough team. Back after this on ESPN+. Plus. There's never been a better time to get away. With it to go. Mount St. Mary's, we know. We'll uh, keep the pressure on until the end. Mountaineers, West Virginia, that is. Trey Mitchell, Joe Toussaint, Eric Stevenson, Muhammad Wagi, and Emmett Matthews. Guys that have earned the trust of Coach Hugs to this point. That time, no good. For Benjamin tipped back towards the rim, loose underneath. Possession of West Virginia. Last touched by Jalen Gibson. Multiple scenarios here, Bake, where we get, yeah, tough. Oof. Yes. You're right, Wayne. And token pressure. I thought Mount St. Mary's would come with a little more pressure than they did. Yep. They can press late. You know, West Virginia, no trouble getting the ball across half court. Good guard play out here for the Mountaineers. Ten on the shot clock. Stevenson. Foul underneath. Otherwise, that was another turnover. Yeah. A lot of contact is... Washingtonian. For West Virginia, you go down the other end now on defense. You know, no stupid fouls, no reaches. Not, you know, make them earn anything that they get, but you don't want to stick them on the foul line. 76% free throw shooter, Emmett Matthews, is starting his 99th career game. 124 in his pocket now. And he gets them both. 66 52. It's a 30 to 18 game at halftime. West Virginia has increased its point total in half number two. Limited time left. 215 remains. Contact there, Matthews and Stevenson. And a few scores. Toussaint double teamed here. Needs to show some escapability there, and he's fouled instead. Look at Tinsley. It's a shame that he did foul him because they had to sign him oh, trouble yeah. just now. And somehow, oh, some way, that is just the first foul of the game against Tinsley. In a game that has seen many. Two shots. This has been a second half where West Virginia and Mount St. Mary's have just been in a gritty, gritty game. Tucson hits the first, but for West Virginia, Bake, 21 fouls against West Virginia, 22 fouls against Mount St. Mary's. Well, Bob Huggins talked early on about how tough the non conference schedule is going to be, and this is a game that, yeah, West Virginia. It's going to win this game, but still, still, this is a very, very good challenge for the Mountaineers early on. And the uh, the rest of the non-conference schedule is going to be very difficult. Having to go to Portland, Oregon, and do some other things, so that'll get them ready for Big 12 play. And we'll get that foul on the ground against Wagee. So two to shoot, nonetheless. For Tinsley, basket would not count. George. 146 to go. Well, Bake, we are closing in on the end of things here. Um, good and bad for both. Well, you know, if you're Mount St. Mary's, you're probably a little upset with the way you started because the yeah. shooting was there and the, 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 the easy ones they missed inside. But you got to like the fight, that the fight that they didn't quit. And for West Virginia, 
when they needed somebody to step up, they had different guys step up. That's good to see. And Mount St. Mary's shot just 21% in that first half. Mountaineers up 68-55. McGee chases that one down. Stevenson escapes. He'll make that every time. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. They give him that space. Stevenson with 10 now. He's in double figures. And look, he got a piece of it. 106 to go. The Washington connection. Not brought the house up. Turnover forced by West Virginia. Toussaint the other way. Joe Toussaint scores. And that'll do it. West Virginia up 19. Their largest lead of the game comes with 50 seconds to go. The alley-oop from Stevenson to Emmett Matthews. A bucket from Toussaint and a big triple on the other end from Gibson. Simply on Friday, it won't help us much, but I'll be ready to go. <laughs> you know what, Bake, I'd say that uh, they could use your help, but board-wise, West Virginia has had a, a nice job. 44 rebounds as a team. Nice job handling that pressure. Double team comes. With a handiwork from Toussaint. Shot clock at 15. Maybe last possession of the game for West Virginia. Rebounding advantage was 44 to 28. Mountaineers. This is clutch shooting in the in the final stages, though, Bake for West Virginia. Five of their last five, but we have seen positive trends towards the end of it. Joe well, yeah, luck, uh, you know, some of those were the layups that they were able to get, but nevertheless. Mountaineers shooting 58% in half number two. So that is, uh, that's good. Both made. 76 to 58. Tinsley. Lipscomb. McGee forces the miss. Nine seconds to go. No quit. <laughs> Joe Toussaint trying to pick up a, a cheap foul. <laughs> West Virginia victorious in its opener. 76 to 58. Mountaineers.